Popcorn Movie fans. I'm your host, Natasha Martinez, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news in the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us on this jam-packed show is John Campia. Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the Best Damn Movie Related Show on the planet Earth, coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California, and it's Birdman 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, Birdman Rises. There's a lot to talk about today. Also joining us is Jeremy Johns. Hi, how you? Oh, hey, it's hey. it's, it's oh. Well, <laughs> with this dynamic duo, this is, Christian we're Harlock. We're team uh, John's loft today. Like how are you, Statler? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Also joining us, host of Heroes, John Schnapp. Cacaw, cacaw. <laughs> what the hell was that? Birdman. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and our very special guest, actor, director, and America's favorite stick man, Michael Rapaport. Hey. Glad yeah. to be here. Did we introduce Christian? I, I, well, you just kind of figured. They did I, like yeah, a double shot, and I threw it in there. Not that I care. I'd Let say, me be clear. I, I don't care. I appreciate that you didn't, because it would have been awkward to come back, so thank you for that, John. <laughs> you all know Christian. Okay? We all hey, know. Hey, listen, before we get rolling uh, too much into this, I'm going to let you guys know that uh, we've got some work going on in the studio here, so we are not going to have a movie talk tomorrow. This is the last movie talk of the week, so we're going to make it a little bit of a longer one for that reason, and because we got this guy here, Michael Rapp. First of all, Michael, thanks for coming, man. Thanks this is having such me. a pleasure having you here. I appreciate it. And actually, you know what? There is, I, I just want to talk to you just for a second before we get into all the movie news stuff today. But you've got an impressive, great resume, not only as an actor, but you've done some documentary film work as well, some really impressive stuff. And, you know, Tribe Called, they, there's a new album coming out. Can you yep. tell us a little bit about your documentary? Um, well, I did a documentary called Beats, Rhymes, and Life The Travels of a Tribe Called Quest, which I believe came out, man, was it 2012 or 13? I can't remember. I'm not good with dates, but, <laughs> you know, it was a, a passion project and, and I'm glad we got it done and it was very, very proud of it. And, you know, with the passing of Fife Dog and all the tumultuous, you know, stuff that goes on within the Tribe Cold Quest, and I mean that in the, in the most, uh, you know, uh, genuine, uh, you know, compassionate, you know, nonsense uh sarcastic way <laughs> you know i'm glad that we were able to get the movie uh made and mm -hmm. i'm looking forward to their new record coming out um tomorrow right friday wow. so it's been 18 years since they made a new record and i know the fans are excited and, and you know i know I, I haven't seen this much hype on you know uh, a saturday night live uh you know combo with them and dave Chappelle. that's gonna be awesome it's yeah. gonna be great because you know tribe's never done saturday night live and dave Chappelle's never done saturday night live so it's it's exciting time for the group and and i'm really uh proud that i was able to make the movie and i can't wait to hear the record i haven't heard it at all I, i've also heard some rumblings that you're involved with this new woody allen netflix project is that is that true oh yeah 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 i'm i'm, I'm involved with it I, I i did one episode and um, you know, it's Woody and it's uh, Miley Cyrus and um, who else is in it? There's a bunch of good people in it, but you know, it's always, this is the third time I've gotten to work with him. So it's a pleasure to always work with him. He's so prolific and iconic and you know, he's just, it's just a, an honor to really be working with him. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I was like, kind of like the fact that I was doing it the third time, I was like, I'm working with Woody Allen for the third time, <laughs> you know, like, so it, it was cool. It was cool. All right, well, listen, we got a whole bunch of crap to get to today. So, Natasha, what's up first? Okay, first up, the new King Kong has been <clears throat> unveiled. A new image from Kong Skull Island, Warner Brothers' highly anticipated reboot of the King Kong property, has been released online that gives us our first look at the creature. Jordan Vote Roberts directs this big budget pick that takes place in the 1970s during the Vietnam War. Speaking with EW, Vote Roberts explained his approach to reimagining the creature, saying, We sort of went back to the 1993. Or, 1933 version in the sense that he's a bipedal creature that walks in an upright position as opposed to the anthropomorphic anatomically correct silverback gorilla that walks on all fours. Our Kong was intended to say like this isn't just a big gorilla or a big monkey. This is something that is its own species. It has its own set of rules so we can do what we want <laughs> and we really wanted to pay homage to <laughs> what came before and yet do something completely different. As far as its comparison yeah. to Warner Brothers other monster Godzilla but Robert said we're also fundamentally not playing the same game that Gareth Edwards Godzilla did and most monster movies do which I'm sort of sick of the notion that a monster movie needs to wait an hour or 40 minutes until the creature shows up Kong traditionally <laughs> does not show up in these movies until very very late and the monster traditionally does not show up until very very late in a monster movie so a lot of these movies tend to have this structure that's a bit of a slow burn something about this movie made me want to reject that and play a very very different game Christian I'm calling you out now thoughts on the comments 
presents a new image for Cog Skull Island. I think Mike's busting. I, think Mike's I, 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 I gotta say let's something go here. Go I gotta say something here. And Natasha, that was a great reading of that long quote. Thank you. I hope to God this guy's fucking movie. <laughs> Is more interesting than his analogy of what his fucking movie is gonna be. <laughs> I never heard. What the fuck was that? <laughs> that was like a deposition. Who gives a shit, man? This is. Let me tell you something. I I, I watched this show. And I'm gonna tell you something. I'm not gonna sit here for an hour talking about these monster movies, these comic book villains, and all this bullshit. This guy's talking about what we did in the original. What was it? 1933. 1933. Who, who's doing the math? No one. You think that any of the kids? that are going to see this fucking thing, and the parents that have to drag their kids to see this nonsense are gonna sit there and watch the, 1993, the 1933 version to be like, oh, well, he wasn't anatomically correct. And Listen, this is what's wrong. I'm gonna tell you straight up, this is what's wrong with Hollywood, and this is a cinephile movie. This is what's wrong with cine cinema in general. Hollywood is fucked. We're, we're fu I'm part of it. I'm part of it. I would love to be a part of this movie, but if people... <laughs> No, I had a great sell to well, get out of it. No, I'd love to be, any actor would be, uh, love to be a part of it because being in one of these movies is like being in The Godfather now. There isn't, because there is no Godfather. So to get a part in that and to get, you know, your, your paycheck in it and hopefully have your name on the poster is a good career move. But if you think that someone wants to sit around and they're going to compare the night, how many King Kong movies, is that, haven't they done like three or four or this five? This is a fifth one. In, the, in, the, in this modern time. Oh, yeah. And every time they re, they're re-duping it and re Cut the bullshit, man. <laughs> Just make the fucking movie. Hopefully it's huge success. Hopefully you got a good part for, for, for a shit. Is it take place in New York this no, one? No, no. Does it, so I, I, I definitely won't get a chance to be in this one. That's the line. Right? This so this what's, the, what's the difference between this, this one, one and the last this one? This one, King Kong, is as big as Godzilla. And there's Great. No, there's no Beauty and the Beast angle this time. What is the, what, there's no there's no girl? Not this time. He's just he's gonna going knock to... shit down yeah. and <laughs> yeah. fucking the buildings that they knocked down in the last one and we're gonna be scared and the, the, the apes gonna they're be changed. sent back into the ocean. Where are they gonna put the apes? They're not gonna, no ocean this one. He doesn't, he can't swim. Um, so what they're, what they're <laughs> How do you know? Because that's that's what they said. They rebooted this as a non-swimming ape. What they're gonna do- A non-swimming ape. He's a walking ape. He doesn't run around like a- But if he's so big, he can just walk into the ocean. He'll have like a head that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking guy. I, I, I've never seen somebody be so sincere, so serious about his movie, a King Kong movie. Just cut the shit, man. It's Wait, King but, Kong. But Does anyone take this shit serious? Yeah, a lot King of Kong. Do. A lot of people Wait, take I want to see serious. Michael Rappaport in King Kong versus Godzilla. He's, right. he's I know. pimping right now. He could do it. But don't you think Michael, don't they movie. have to take this serious? Though, too, you have to. They're, like the, these directors that do it, they're total artists. They're, they're totally sincere. And yes, they do have to. I'm, I'm making light of they. Have to take it serious. <laughs> it's a trim. Listen, it's a huge job. It's a huge undertaking. This film hasn't gone into production yet. No, it's almost it's, done. It's, it's almost done. Okay. Yeah. The I mean, came out I, I respect the shit out of these directors. They, 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 it takes like a year, two years to make these movies. I, the craftsmanship and all the technicality that goes into it. But for me, as a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a movie fan, and this is just me. I feel like I'm in the minority. I personally. And this is just how I feel. And I respect all the actors and all the directors that are in them and God bless them and, 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 and Robert Downey Jr. and Favreau and all, they should make money and be successful to do whatever the fuck they want. And I would love to be in any of those movies, but I can't tell you the difference between a fucking Iron Man, a Batman, a, 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 a Superman, a Spider-Man. Each, every five weeks, they're getting a new Spider-Man into this one. I have an actor friend of mine who had to go through the rigmarole of potentially being Spider-Man. I was like, they're making you audition for this shit? They're fucking <laughs> making you audition to play? Like, you're either the guy or you ain't the fucking guy. They t it's so ultra serious and there's testing and it's like, get the fuck out of here. You could put you. They could take an unknown person off the street who's never acted before. Who says no experience, no fan base, no Twitter page, no Instagram, no followers, no anything. All you got to do is put them in the movie. Spider-Man is selling the movie. It doesn't matter. King Kong with this fucking Donkey Kong shit. Where <laughs> people are going to go see it because of that. But they're like, you know, but, micromanaging every little what? point of it. And for, I'm just saying from an actor's point of view, I'm telling you the real deal. It's some bullshit. I think it was the other way around. I think years ago, you might add a point there. with. I think they've, they've gone a different direction here with these types of movies. I think you are, when you are getting guys, this guy directed Kings of Summer, which is a smaller independent film, and the thing kicked ass. And I think oh, I think I saw that. By taking filmmakers like this. And you this, know what's incredible? I'm not going to say I think no, I was in that. No, 
No, I think it's, I think, <laughs> no, I think it's great. They're taking filmmakers, filmmakers like this, and they took my man who who directed um um Creed, uh -huh. who who directed um what, what was the first film he uh, did? Truth Station. Station. Excellent, and he's directing some Black some, Panther. I think it's fantastic, but but. To me, this guy who did Kings of Summer, this small movie, and I know Favreau did those, and I think it's great. I respect these guys. I'm just saying, for me, as far as a, a lover of cinema and a participant in in in, in the Screen Actors Guild, and, and and you know, and someone who goes to the movies as a fan, and, and who happens to also participate in the business of show, the the fact that these movies are like the epicenter. Of, of movieism and the epicenter of like where these young actors, these 22 year old actors, like you have to be in one of those movies to sort of get to that bit. It's fucking bullshit, man. <laughs> it's fucking bullshit. <laughs> and this is, and it's a totally different time, but it's like the, you, you're, you're, the days of, of, of a great true movie star who's a great true actor who's, who's you know, who puts his blood and guts in the film, done. It's done. I, I don't see. I, I, not, I disagree I, yeah. with that. I disagree. Why? With, but I get to, let me get back you, to the quotes just for a second, though. I, one of the things that's in here that I really like, going back to the quote, <laughs> one of the things that is in these quotes that I think is really amazing, that is really good, because this is one of the big things. Like, I love Peter Jackson as a filmmaker, but one of the things I could not stand about that first King Kong movie was that I was ready to leave the theater before was King Kong ever Black showed one? up. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Before King Kong ever showed up. Like You're Godzilla, on a boat for an hour. the recent yeah. Godzilla right, movie, right? right? We're, we're like we're waiting and waiting and waiting for Godzilla until he finally shows up, and then he's only on screen for about ten minutes in the movie. I love the fact that he's at least saying that you know, look, we're not going to do the same thing they did with Godzilla, the monster king. In this case, King Kong, he's going to show up because you're absolutely right. That's what people are going to go see King Kong for. They're going to go see King Kong, for not Kong, for John for Goodman. Kong. Yeah, and I love yeah, and I yeah, love they, John Goodman. They're all great, but it's like you could put you could put John Goodman, you could put John Turturro, you could put Ed Harris, you could put Bill Murray, you could put any one of these actors in it, and they should all get it and they should make their fucking money because that's the only uh. no. You yeah, think I, it's a bullshit? I, I, no, that's no, the no, only no. place. I, I'll disagree Your with you. Your actors cannot make money. Yeah. Actors cannot make money unless in film, unless they're in those movies. Right, but what you're, you're, you're equating you're equating superhero films to like I go back to the fifties and sixties when there were no superhero films and those big name actors like who are now Mike uh, Robert J, J, uh, Robert uh, Downey Jr. Uh, they they would be in Cleopatra. So that's those big budget. That's how, I'm, I'm talking about I'm, the golden age of cinema. No, but, but it's I'm not going to sit there and watch these fucking movies from the no, 1950s. No, no. I'm talking but, about the 60s, talking, 70s, 80s, with, and even into the 90s. Look, I could go toe to toe. We go 70s, 80s, 90s, and we could talk about big movies that came out that had nothing to do with superhero films, but those were big Hollywood movies at the time. That's yes. what the big Hollywood movies are now. Are you saying Benedict Cumberbatch is not a good actor? He's no, in I a didn't big. Say that. No, no, He's no, in no, a no, big. No, don't try to put that because I'm, I'm saying. These actors should do it. They should kick ass and they should make their money. I'm not saying Superhero that. Superhero movies are but the don't blockbuster. Fool yourse right. Don't the blockbuster fool yourself films. to think that any actor worth his fucking salt. They want that money. They but want no, that no. exposure. Don't and think that, that they think that like they're taking that shit seriously and they're like, this is the performance of a lifetime. This ain't the performance of a lifetime. This is a fucking superhero movie. Uh, Heath, Heath Ledger would Man, disagree. Heath Ledger would he, disagree. I was going to go. I was going to reference that. He, he kicked ass. And that shit. And also, my man, um, who was the dude in Batman? Which, and, Christian Bale. Christian Bale. Kicked ass in yeah. that shit too. But Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger would disagree. But how? But how many of these films have been made in the, since that Heath Ledger film? Like oh, in 2008. Not uh, even Batman. Yeah, just the 30. Whole, probably 30. Okay, so we could go to the one performance out of 30 where you're like, yeah, he really he tore that I know, shit up. I think up. Chadwick Boseman's a guy also who's an up and coming uh, actor and has really been kicking ass. Whether he's playing Get On Up he, as James Brown, but then as, as he moves on to play Black Panther, I think a guy like that with that kind of gravitas as an as an actor as a performer, you're getting guys like that who aren't just these. They have no choice. Actors, but they're not throwaway actors though. No, I know not. Yeah. Don't. No, I'm I'm not say anything about the actor. I love the actor. Okay, okay. okay. Let me let me put a muscle on you, right. Jeremy. Yeah, you've been sitting very patiently. No, yeah. That's how, that's how I run. We're on the easy screen. <laughs> sure, and it feels so yeah, sweet. So what do you think about that? I think that director is going to think twice before he answers shit. He's going to be like, is Michael Rappaport watching this? I'm just fucking with you guys. You know, like, I'm just here, you know, having a good time. But It's hot button issues. It's hot button issues. No, but I get, I get, I get, go finish what you're saying, Jeremy. No, I was just saying thank you for taking everyone's mind off of the last two days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, You're okay, the man. Look, 
Look, forgot we are, about that. I right? already said we were going to go just forgot long that was today. Like, I think I appreciate it too because fuck, man, it's, it's been a rough two days. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've got to move on. Rough. I can say like fuck seven no, other. What are the, what are we got like seven other the issues topics? to get to. What's next? Who's okay, what? the first trailer for the Fifth Element director Luke Besson's sci-fi epic Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets has been released online. Based on the long-running French comic Valerian and Loreline, the film stars Cara Delevingne and Dane DeHaan as special operatives for the government of the human territories charged with maintaining order throughout the universe. The film also stars Clive Owen, Rihanna, Ethan Hawke, John mm. Goodman, Herbie Hancock, and Chris Wu. Valerian opens in theaters on July 21st, 2017. Christian, what did you think about the Valerian trailer? Um, look, they mentioned this trailer a lot during Comic-Con this Comic-Con, year. Comic-Con, yeah, it was talking about a lot of Comic-Con. And Luke Besson, who I didn't really love Lucy. I, I thought it, it was a disappointment. I know it made a lot of money, but I was not into the movie at all. I thought it was kind of rehashed nonsense, to be honest with you. But this particular movie, this trailer, I'm, I'm encouraged by it because it's another fantasy sci-fi. We don't have a lot of those. The last few, obviously, with Star Wars, sci-fi fantasy, you got Guardians of the Galaxy, but there haven't been a lot of different sci-fi fantasies. So even though it didn't necessarily blow me away, I, I'm curious about it, but... I, you know, it's it's. Uh. I mean, look, I can tell. I'll, I'll call right now. It's a bad trailer. <laughs> yeah. It's a bad trailer. Yeah. It, that looks amazing. The trailer is breathtakingly beautiful. It looks gorgeous. But aside from that, it did nothing to get me excited for this movie. I'm curious because the visuals are so it's standing. It looks it looks positively like revolutionary as far as the the visual of it because I've never seen it quite done that way. And that's cool. But then I got nothing from the story. The performances and I love Dane DeHaan, but there was. Nothing a lot coming out of this, so I'm not really big on it. What do you think about it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, Lucy happened. That's a fact. Fifth Element Lucy happened. Lucy happened. Yeah, it's just Lucy happened. It, uh, but uh, Fifth Element happened 20 years ago. That makes me want to like it, but in the end, I can't help but think it's going to be Jupiter ascending. I don't want that. Mm. I, I do want the next Fifth Element, though, so I'm with you. I'm kind of like, all right, whatever. <gasps> Michael Rappaport. I don't know. Did you I, have a chance to see? It just dropped this morning, I so you probably didn't have a chance to see. Schnepp, what do you think about it? I actually really liked it. You know, I'm a big science fiction fan. and, and No they did, fucking shit. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no fucking shit. I just mentioned I would be like, yeah, if he's going to say I would say science no, I, fiction. I, I, you didn't just, just meet me, I'm man. Just with you. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm a big nerd, and you know, just I don't mind getting you. called out. Uh, science fiction, definitely, this trailer worked for me. It, it didn't really tell a lot of the story, so we didn't get any kind of, like, scenes, per se. But we got a lot of cool visuals. So for myself, just seeing, a like, a teaser trailer of what this thing is, and this isn't a branded property. This is a European comic book, so no one here in the States really knows what it is. So for myself, I think it's a really good way to get this people get it on people's minds. Like, oh, that the the visuals look really cool. Now I want to know what the story is about. And that's what that'll be the next trailer. Wow, we haven't even gotten to our first official story yet, and we're only 20 <laughs> minutes in. All right, what is our first official story now, Natasha? <laughs> okay, in an interview with the Toronto Sun, Kevin Feige finally confirmed that Michael Keaton is indeed playing longtime Spider-Man nemesis Vulture in their upcoming Spider-Man Homecoming. The Uber producer mentioned the actor's role while talking about Doctor Strange as well as Marvel's upcoming slate of films. We've had a wish list, and most of them in the near term are coming together. Kate Blanchett is playing Hela in Thor Ragnarok, Michael Keaton's Vulture in Spider-Man is something, and of course, finally, we're showcasing Josh Brolin's Thanos in Avengers Infinity War. We're looking forward to that very much. John, thoughts on the confirmation that Michael Keaton is in fact playing Vulture in Spider-Man Homecoming? Look, ever since they said Michael Keaton was going to be in this movie, I think all of us kind of at least half thought that Vulture was a possibility that was a dude. I was still kind of holding out hope a little bit for that he was going to pay uh, JJ. Mm -hmm. I was holding a little bit of hope that he was playing JJ because it does feel kind of weird that he goes from Birdman, which he should have won Best Actor for, by the way. He should have taken another. Who won that year? Uh, that, Eddie Redman, I think, took it that year. Yeah, Am I mistaken? Yeah, I think Eddie Redman. Who, who was also awesome. For, um, the Theory of Everything. The Theory of Everything. Yeah, he was good in yeah, that. He, he, was, was he was great in that. I just thought Michael Keaton probably should have walked home with it, but I got no complaints. But he did what it needed to do for him. Absolutely. No, yeah. it, got him, it got him revitalized. Re, yeah, the reinvigoration. Oh, yeah, it, it yeah. is the Keaton sons now. Like yeah. everybody, Everybody's now talking about Michael Keaton. He was dead and buried. So. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, a long time. I, I say I, I, it's fucked up. He was dead and buried, <laughs> yeah. and I'm glad Birdman was great. And you know, I even thought he was good for his small part in RoboCop remake. I thought he, yeah. I thought he made that he movie watchable. Movie, yeah. But any, anyway, you hear about an actor like Michael Keaton, like despite the, the the our conversation of the previous topic, you hear Michael Keaton is now taking that next step level, it, resurging his career. Do you think he's going to be able to fit into this world they've got going on now? You know, to be. It, to be totally honest, I don't know about the world that good. Like I said, I, I really don't. I don't watch these movies. That's that's real talk. Um, but Michael Keaton could fit into whatever world 
Yeah. You put him in. He's a great actor. He's hungry. He he's revitalized. His career is back on track, and that's fantastic. And he's gonna kick ass. And and I love Michael Keaton playing a bad guy. Yeah. You know? And yeah, he, yeah. he, I I always thought that even you know like the edge that he brought to Batman, but I I felt like Michael Keaton always has that edge to him. There's always sort of mm -hmm. that dangerous quality there's always sort of like uh, unpredictable quality so mm -hmm. if this is a true bad man i think it'll be great i mean i thought he was so good in birdman and that's such a far out mm. interesting movie but i think he'll be he'll be great but i honestly i couldn't tell you what, what's the character you thought he was gonna play vulture i thought he was gonna play jj jonah jameson jj general jameson and these are based on the actual comic books yes yes, yes. see i don't know the difference that's Jeremy. just me. That's just me. <laughs> Batman, Birdman, Vulture, the man is flying. It's really funny that he was uh, Batman, and then usually uh, actors want to get away from the stigma of their comic book movies and get in typecast, and then his career took a dip, and then he comes back, and then he goes back into comic book movies. That is really funny. But You uh, got no fucking choice, man. Yeah, what yeah, is he yeah, going right, to go right, into? I, I agree. I agree. I agree. Small, uh, small dramas and shit? That, you know, he doesn't become a cobbler. Could, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> like Daniel Day-Lewis. <laughs> like Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah, he'll do one movie every right. 10 years. Start rocking right, some right. shoes. I got a shoe store. What up? Yeah, he could be the next Daniel Day Lewis, where it's like the man makes a movie every five years, but it's always great. But no, Michael Keaton is great, and I think he's going to be a great. What is that movie with uh, Garcia, where he was a serial killer and he was Andy a... Garcia? Yeah, and he was a donor match for yeah, Garcia's yeah, son. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and he played a nut. He was like totally crazy in that movie. That. He's, like, he's super he evil. Played, yeah, he so. played got a con. Who, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to Michael Keaton being bad. You know. What yeah. do you think, Christian? I'll tell you what's funny about it is like, and even the conversation we, that Michael brought up before with. Uh, comic movies are some people certain actors directors we've heard Inaritu's comments about superhero movies and, and Birdman was almost like a statement on mm -hmm. the superhero right. movies so it's kind of ironic that the fact that the, the big movie that Keaton does do is a superhero villain right. now so it's interesting to see that he's going to be playing the villain he, you guys are absolutely right you, you put him in a movie like this and it elevates it for sure um, and I think that the rumor that he's playing Vulture was out, has been out there for a long time mm -hmm. so it's no big surprise what do you think Schnapp? Uh, I would like to see him like return a little bit to his night shift, like you know, feed mayonnaise to tuna, you know, <laughs> like if he had to add a little bit more of that manic element to the vulture character, I think I'd love to see it. But I, I'm glad they finally said it. They've been beating around the bush for a while. So. Yeah, it's finally. You know, one other interesting point out that in all these stories that are coming out, they were talking about Zendaya, who's of course cast to play the movie, heavily rumored to play Mary Jane. They asked her again about it, and she has not confirmed that she's playing playing Mary Jane. As a matter of fact, she went so far as to say that in this movie, she is not going to be a love interest to Peter Parker. So that counters a lot of the rumors we heard. Anyway, let's move on to the next topic. What's up, Natasha? Star Wars The Force Awakens actor John Boyega took to his Instagram account to announce the first day of filming on the sequel for Pacific Rim 2 has begun. In doing so, the actor revealed the title as Pacific Rim Maelstrom, a name that has been rumored for some time. Boyega portrays the son of Idris Elba's stalker Pentecost who died at the end of the first film. Daredevil showrunner Stephen S. DeKnight will direct this time around, who also teamed the production start from his own Twitter account. The movie also stars Scott Eastwood, Kaylee Spaney, Jing Tian, and Levi Maiden, and is set to hit theaters on February 23rd, 2018. Jeremy, thoughts on the confirmed title for Pacific Rim 2? I think that's a great title. It's a solid title. I mean, Maelstrom, so it's, what is it, a vortex in the ocean? Makes sense. That's where the that's where the rift is. Um, I loved Pacific Rim, man. I had a great time with it. I'm sad they lost Guillermo del Toro, but uh, I, I want to see what this does. Anytime they flip directors, it's always that that unknown, that variable. But I mean, you guys know me. I have two dogs. Their names are Gypsy and Danger. That's real. <laughs> and, uh, this and, and look, it's nice that they're moving forward with it. I had my doubts that they could or should move forward with it. The last one only made like 410 million, which I know that sounds like a ridiculously large number, and it is. But when you consider how much money it costs to yeah. make that film, which was close to 200 million to make that film, like they so just barely broke even. Yeah, they barely broke even. But now they're moving on from a lot of story. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you can make seven movies with that, right? <laughs> $210 million? To make that movie, yeah. yeah. Oh my God. And, but, you know, look, you got a visionary director like Guillermo del Toro, and you look at all the other crap that he's created, which has been awesome. I did want to see him come back and do it again. He's not... So at this yeah. point, I'm kind of neutral on it. What do you yeah. think, Christian? Uh, I'm a big Stephen Knight fan. I think what he did in Daredevil was great. Um, I like. Screw Daredevil. What he did with Spartacus was great. Yeah. Well, I didn't. I never, never saw it. But uh, I, I, Stephen Knight, I'm very excited to see what he's going to do. So the title, Jeremy, sorry, the title fits. It makes sense, and I like the fact that they got Boyega into it. I'm actually, I think that the second one is going to be better than the first one. Schnapp. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm very glad that they're giving this, uh, you know, a second run. I think. Everything I saw in the first movie was a lot of fun. It's giant monsters fighting giant robots. Makes you feel like you're eight. Did you see Pacific Rim? 
Nah, man. <laughs> I think your kids would love it. My, my, honestly, my kids are, are they're, they're, they're teenagers now, and they're the kind of teenagers that are like, they're just not into it. Yeah. But they, they, they had their faith. But I know I'm in the minority. So, but so, 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 so we have monsters. He's yep. still shaking about this $210 million dollar budget. Thing. No, no, this is like. <laughs> I want to keep track. We have monsters weird, fighting robots. Yeah, kaiju, giant robots. Yeah. Kaiju giant How, monsters from Monsters under the, that bleed. Bleed, yep. Fighting robots that are mechanical. With yes. dudes, little dudes, real dudes inside like them. In their heads. Yeah. Like Robotech style stuff. Voltron, baby. Yeah. I hear you. It's a combo <laughs> old school <laughs> thing, man. So, He's like, sure. Uh, so the yeah, right. He's in room two. I'm all into it. I'm not lying. He's writing a script in his head right now. Right um, now. I wish I could, man. I would be writing fucking $210 million film, man. God damn. All right, listen, wait, guys. Wait, wait, wait. Remember wait. when uh, Titanic wait. was the big film? Titanic was, it was 90 a big million? Film, yeah. Yes, Didn't it cost yeah. 90 million? That's Something like a joke now, right? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, that's called an indie film now. Yeah, yeah. back when Terminator 2 made a hundred, like, or cost 115 million bucks, it was like, whoa, yeah. that's <laughs> huge. <laughs> All right, it is Thursday, which means it is time for us to talk about what is opening this week, brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. We've got two other films besides Arrival opening this week. Natasha, tell us about them. Okay, we have Almost Christmas. Walter, played by Danny Glover, is a retired automotive engineer who lost the love of his life one year earlier. Now that the holiday season is here, he invites his four grown children and the rest of the family to his house for a traditional celebration. Poor Walter knows that if daughters Rachel, played by Gabrielle Union, and Cheryl, played by Kimberly Elise, and sons Christian, played by Romany Malco, and Evan, played by Jesse T. Usher, can spend five days together under the same roof, it will truly be a Christmas miracle. We also have Shut In opening this week. Mary, played by Naomi Watts, is a child psychologist who lives in isolation in rural New England after her husband dies in a horrific car accident. The tragedy also leaves her 18-year-old stepson Stephen, played by Charlie Heaton in a bedridden, catatonic state, making him completely dependent on her. When one of Mary's young patients goes missing and is presumed dead, she becomes convinced that the boys played, or she becomes convinced that the boys played by Jacob Tremblay, ghost is now haunting her both and Stephen. I, you know, so if I'm looking at these ones, we already talked about Arrival on uh, Tuesday about right. that film. Then we've got these two. Look, if it comes down to me, the one I'm, if I got to pick one of these two to go to this weekend, the one that appeals to me most, although I think Almost Christmas is going to be funnier than a lot of people think. I've been talking to a few people about that, but Shut In kind of fascinates me. If you got to pick one this weekend, which one are you going to? Yeah, the bummer is my move down here, if I had already made the screening to Arrival, then I'd be open to look forward to other things, but like, oh, oh no, Arrival's not this. Yeah. No, it's just these two. We talked about Arrival on oh, okay, Tuesday. Okay, sorry about that. Well, all right, eeny meeny miny. <laughs> yeah, I would do. Uh, I'm gonna do shut in just because I didn't give, I didn't care about the movie initially, and then I saw a trailer for it that looked kind of creepy, and I don't know what it's about at all. And so I like that. I like the mystery of it. Schnepp, yeah. you got to pick one this week. Out of these two, which one are you going to? I'm saving my money for Bad Santa 2. When's that coming out? <laughs> <laughs> but no, you got to pick uh, one. If I had to pick to yeah. with a gun to my head, I'm going to see Shut In just because Charlie Heaton did such a great job in Room. I want to see what oh, he's yeah, doing. Oh, yeah, As he's a Same still director? A kid, uh, oh, different the director, kid? just the kid. So oh, okay. He did such an amazing job in his, as a first-time you know, child actor. I want to see his progression. So. Well, if you got to go to see one this week, which one are you going I'm, to? I'm not got to go. I'm going to see Almost Christmas for sure. Yeah, I think that looks I'll also go see Shut, uh, Shut, Shut, in. Shut in also. But if I had to go, what I'm going to go see is Almost Christmas uh, first, also because I feel like my shirt will match it. <laughs> <laughs> but but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go see both of them. Naomi Watts is great, and uh, I, I just think that the Almost Christmas will be an underrated, uh, funny uh, movie with a lot of heart, and I love the cast, and, and I, I want to support that movie. All right, guys, we reached that part of the show now for buy or sell. Here's how this works. In front of her, Natasha's got a few other items in the world of movie news. She's going to run them down. And then those ones at the table are simply going to say whether we buy it or sell it or a few other things. So, Natasha, what do we got? (laughs) Okay, Paramount Pictures and Skydance Media have announced they have set a summer 2018 release date for Mission Impossible 6. The sixth installment will hit theaters on July 27th, 2018, which is the same date Warner Brothers Pictures currently has set for Aquaman. MI6 is poised to start filming in spring of 2017 with Tom Cruise returning as well as Rogue Nation standout Rebecca Ferguson. Christian, buy or sell the new release date for Mission Impossible 6. Uh, I'm going to buy it even though it's going to be tough for a lot of people I think for choosing. I know that not everybody gets to go and see all of the big releases so you got to pick and choose. So the last two Mission Impossibles, you talk about a franchise that was going, I think was the second one to me I didn't like at all. The third one yeah. got better than the, uh, the last two. Better and better each installment. So I think I'm excited for the next one. I'm actually looking right now. I'm looking forward to that one the most, and then Aquaman. So, 
we'll see. I think it makes sense that they're putting it right in the in the heat of summer. Jeremy, yeah, I uh, I agree with you. It's one of those rare franchises that somehow started getting better and better and better. The last two were great. I have no reason to not look forward to this movie, so I'm saying I'm buying this. I'm going to sell it for two different reasons. Number one, there is yeah, there is no chance in hell, I'll go on record right now, that this and Aquaman are going to open on the same yeah. day. It's not going to happen. Somebody's going to move off mm -hmm. of that, whether it's this one or that one or the other. I am going to say this too. I really love the last two Mission Impossible mm -hmm. films. I did, but I got to tell you, it's a different franchise. But watching the most recent Jack Reacher has diminished my enthusiasm mm -hmm. for the next Mission Impossible. It's a different director. It's a different franchise entirely. I'm just saying it hurt my enthusiasm a little bit. So I'm going to sell it. Schnapp, what about you? I'm going to buy it just because I really liked the last two Mission Impossible movies. They're just a lot of fun. They're like everything that James Bond isn't right now, which mm. is fun. And it's like I just watched the fifth one again like yeah, on cable. And I was really like, good. it's so much fun that the same team that made that one is coming back for the sixth one. Have you seen the Mission Impossible movies with Tom Cruise? Of course, I've seen them. I like them. Um, didn't he just come out? with a, a film? Jack Reacher, Jack Reacher, Reacher number two. Did but people like that? No. Not really. <laughs> but this is different. I love the first one. Though. Yeah. I thought the first Jack Reacher was really yeah. good. I was Do you think that one. Tom Cruise approaches his Mission Impossible character any different than his Jack Reacher character? Ish. But not by Yeah, much. I agree. It's the like same little, thing, right? Yeah. For the most part. Uh, but uh, yeah, Mission Impossible, I mean, they have good actors in that. The stories are always good. I can't ever tell what the fuck's going on. I'm just waiting for the car <laughs> the car flips and, and all that stuff. <laughs> but waiting for I'm, him to I'm run. Sure That's the title yeah. of this one, yeah. Car Flips. Yeah. Ethan Hunt, yeah, yeah. Cruz as Ethan Hunt is a little bit smarter and less brutish than yeah. Jack Reacher. So. A little bit, You can yeah. tell the difference. A I variation. can tell the difference, yeah. yeah. yeah a little bit he smarter. looks good. He yeah. hasn't aged. Oh, he no. really hasn't. No. He's no. like in a time capsule. Like in 1996, and then it's just like, it just stopped. He's like 56 now. I think that's He's like, 50, yeah. he's like, like 56 that. now, and he looks like he's yeah. in his 30s. I think yeah. he's a reference that Michael won't get. He's like Winter Soldier. They're just like, after every movie, they freeze him, and then they thaw him out, and he does another movie, and they freeze him again. He's still yeah. 30. All right, what's next? During an interview with producer David Heyman at the recent Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them junket, Slash Film asked about the new Willy Wonka movie in the works at the studio. Heyman emphasized that the movie won't be just another rehash of the same movies and instead tease it as an origin story. Heyman <laughs> also revealed that the rights to the Road Dolls novels all tied up, so he hinted that the movie might explore other periods of Willy Wonka's life not found in the books. <laughs> it's challenging because you don't have doll, you don't have a doll book, and yet you have a doll character. But I think there's a lot in his character that suggests who he is and also where he might come from or what his childhood or his middle age might have been like. So we're exploring that. We're discussing it. We're in the very early stages and very excited about what lies ahead. Michael, buy or sell the new Willy Wonka movie, possibly not utilizing the books for Wonka's origin story. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't think uh, we know yet. Flappy do McWilliams. Yeah. We don't yeah, know. Yeah, they don't know. No, yeah. they, they just, we just want. We, well, you can, who's going to play Willy Wonka? They don't they know. Yeah, it's just, oh, it's okay. just announced. All right. Well. It's just a writer yeah. he's working on. He's saying he's figuring it out. He's saying he's yeah. screwed. He can't use any of the source material. We it's going to be candy. about his kids. Yeah. We want candy bars, and yeah. we we need a good guy to play Willy Wonka. No disrespect to Johnny Depp. But he dropped the ball on that. It was a fucking joke. Yeah. He, he, that was that was poorly executed, and I think it really puts people uh, hesit to hesitate to see another Willy Wonka movie. We want candy bars, jelly beans, and 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 and, and you, you know you, it's hard to replace Gene Wilder, right. and they took it too much into an acid trip. Uh, with uh, uh, the the Michael ja Jackson creepazoid, yeah. Yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Schnapp, what do you think? Yeah, I'm, I would rather chew on an everlasting gobstopper for the rest of my <laughs> life than see this version of it. They're going to they're going to show you know Willy Wonka's family and he's like crying. You know, I, I, I it just sounds horrible. If they can't use the source material. Screw it, Jeremy. Yeah, I'm selling that too. I, I don't, the, the cool thing about Willy Wonka is he is that dude who's perpetually a man child. It's actually quite creepy when you think about it's it. It's kind of you. It's kind of the story oh, of your life. Yeah, a little bit. Well, less creepy. Well, thank you for saying that after I said creepy. But uh, <laughs> I said good day, sir. I said good day, sir. <laughs> right. He has like the half phase with the hat but the cool thing is that he has that factory and he's just kind of he's a strange person but it's a cool magical land mm -hmm. i don't care what he was like as a kid i just don't christian i think it goes back to what michael was saying here though too i want to see who's going to direct <laughs> it and who's going to star in it because you tell me that inner is directing it which is not going to happen but if you tell me that villeneuve <laughs> is, sure. is directing it not going to happen but if that happens it's going to pique my curiosity but i'm still selling it because i don't give a shit about right. about this i don't, I don't care <laughs> and also 
if you're going to go so far from what Willy Wonka is to 99.9% of the people, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, right, if right. you're going to go so far into, uh, uh, far away from right, right, right. what we want, what we expect, why not just make a whole new original film? Right. Why even right. be associated with Willy Wonka? Because you, 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 you could say that and it'll get people... Go, like, if you're not going to make this, if you're not going to do that again, which they, they dropped the ball on that, just... Take all that creativity and that input and that time and just start a whole new thing. You know, you're pulling on heartstrings on people, too, and it's a dangerous thing, too, if you, if you start pissing people off because it, this is a beloved thing, and it's the wrong time to do, I think, right now. You just had the passing of Gene Wilder. The fact that he, Gene Wilder was totally against the remake with Tim Burton, and now they're doing this, because, and they don't have any source material to build from now because they don't have any rights, so they're starting from scratch, which could be a complete disaster. I say just stay away from it. Just push I'm it selling. to the side. Sell you're, it. Right? Selling. Everybody sell you're it. playing a dangerous game when you rely on brand recognition and heartstrings yep. attached right. because if it goes even remotely south and it will the fans of the originals will turn on you quickly and that's something they're in danger of here all right what's next it looks like spider-man is in it for the long haul after debuting as the web slinger in this year's captain america civil <laughs> war actor tom holland <laughs> revealed that he signed on to appear as a superhero huh. in six marvel movies huh. here's what he told THR. They give you options and those could be exercised whenever, like a cameo in Avengers. I'm unclear as to which movies though. I do know I have three Spider-Man appearances in other movies and three solo movies contracted, but if you have another movie, Marvel is good about working around it. They're very respectful of your life, really. Really? Sh really? <laughs> Snap by herself Tom Holland appearing as Spidey in six movies for Marvel and Sony. Mm. This what fucking kid should just yeah. be like, I'm fucking happy to be here. I'll do whatever they tell me, when they tell me, and I'm happy Happy to be playing Spider-Man. They're really respectful Let me ask about you your a life. Let me ask you your life is playing Spider-Man from here forward, kid. That's it. <laughs> That's fucking it. Oh, they're really happy to let you get the fuck out of here. You should be happy that you're playing Spider-Man in the next six, nine movies. Okay, my man. That's it. Be happy. Let me ask you this: Friday the Thirteenth, right? Yeah. You know they got a new one. They're they're remaking a new Friday the Thirteenth. Do you care about Jason's father? Do I care about Jason's like father? Like seeing a, an origin story when Jason Voorhees was like, like finding eight. out why he's like, so messed up. Yeah, who cares like, about that? Do you that? care about is like the the childhood of Jason? Come on, not so much. I mean, th that's what the new Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, is that's what, be. well, that's the rumors. Yeah. So yeah. you're gonna see yeah. like what Jason was. Uh, why like he was as messed a kid up? His, kid, his, dad. his dad didn't let him watch the TV shows. He didn't let him watch Three's Company, so he's all pissed off. <laughs> 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 that, 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 right. That's what that's what caused all the problems. Yeah, that's it. You just let him watch that. That that ABC. Tuesday fine. night lineup, you'd right. have been fine. Give him a little Joni and Chachi. Right, yeah. right. Uh, I mean, I, I, I would love to see, you know, those movies were so genuinely scary uh, uh, as a kid. I mean, I would love to see one of those movies be, be good uh, now. They were fun. Yeah. But I just wanted to throw that in there. Yeah, Spider-Man. Uh, <laughs> six movies, three are going to be him. Like, Gary was in Civil War, so that's one of them. Spider-Man Homecoming, that's two. So he's got four left in his contract where he's making a ton of money. And Marvel's really cool. Who is this so kid? He's like 19 <laughs> years old. He's a young kid. What is he he's from London? Wait, 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 yeah, no, yeah, I the Impossible. I fucking yeah. knew it. I said London. I knew it. But Scotland. Scotland. Did you see yeah. The Impossible? Where, wait, we can't have no. our own... Superheroes played by Americans? Absolutely not. We got, we're so fucked up. Our actors are so inept. We're from Australia. They got to be from England or so Australia. Because yeah. American actors yeah. aren't uh, trained. Get the fuck uh. out of here. We can't have our own American born and bred superheroes played right. by American actors. I know. Give me a fucking break. Yeah, that's right. Do you, is there any superheroes that are from London or, or Australia or any of these places? Nope. Not no. Yet. If, they, if they were, if there were, you bet your bottom fucking dollar. Yeah. They would never hire an American to play one of their superheroes but over here we got oh we have to find him he's great he was trained we've never seen him before like i said they could put you in the fucking spider-man movie and people are going to go see it because it's spider-man but going back you let christian bale as batman yeah but he's christian bale oh. <laughs> <laughs> well said, well said, well well said. Said. I mean, he's a very 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 right. very good actor i'm just saying like you know like like, like there's a like there was a super wasn't there a movie come out that came know, out? henry cavill is 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 british henry, also yeah, yeah. Right. Just my point. Everybody. Just I, my saw, I saw the point. light leave the guy's eyes yeah, when you said that. Yeah. <laughs> Just my fucking point. Right. They never let American actors, rarely, they rarely let American actors play Australians, Brits, Scots, any other thing, unless they really, really, really have to, or if, they, or if they're really, really a big star. It's a tough accent. But, Right. Well, so is a fucking New York accent, well, but yeah. they let anybody from all over the place <laughs> come well, and do. I'm not going to disagree. Try. I'm not disagreeing with you on that one. Some New York accents for most actors are shit. I love you, Tom Holland. You can follow me at Jeremy Johns. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Tom Holland? 
He's Spider-Man. <laughs> the 19-year-old kid? Perfect. Yeah. All right, what's next? Okay, according to Doctor Strange director Scott Derrickson, the movie was originally supposed to feature an entirely different villain than the one we ended up with. During an interview with Empire Magazine, Derrickson said one of his initial ideas was to incorporate Nightmare, ruler of the dream dimension, instead of Dormammu. He said, Marvel Studios head Kevin Feige made a very cogent case. The trouble with starting with Nightmare is getting across the idea of the dream dimension as another dimension. The movie was challenging enough. It's already an exposition-heavy movie. Dormammu made the most sense and he is the most present villain in the comics john buy or sell the villain nightmare for an upcoming doctor strange movie i'm gonna sell it actually i think this like what they did with doctor strange was great and the movie is wonderful it's fun it's entertaining the performance mads mickelson just killed it for the for the role that he had uh, i thought Cassilius was the right villain to go with i had some criticism of dormammu as the villain all that, but i do think feige was right you're already asking the audience to kind of wrap their head around a type of movie that they've never seen before in a superhero thing, where you're going to the magic realm and, and the multi and the trippy acid <clears throat> stuff. And they did it great, but they're already asking a lot from the audience. To go now into like a separate thing with the Dream Warriors and Freddy Krueger comes out, I don't know. This was the right move, so I, I, I sell the idea of having Nightmare. Schnapp, what do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, from the comic books, I loved uh, Nightmare. He was actually in the very first Strange Tales with Doctor Strange. I want to take this man, get stoned, and see Doctor Strange. <laughs> fucking I, love I, it. No, I heard it was good. You I heard it was it. very good. All <laughs> that negative energy about the superhero show will be drained away into the fucking world like of the Doctor cosmos, I feel like Doctor Strange, man. if you just go see it, not knowing anything about what it is... You will love it. You're able to follow it? Oh, totally yeah. Follow okay, it. Yeah, like yeah, I heard it was loved great. It. I heard it's it was great. Swinton, Mads Mikkelsen. No, I heard it was just acting talent. No, I heard it was really good. That they didn't go right with Nightmare which is a character that like you know a dude is like I can't stop having these nightmares he goes to see this guy who could cure him that's the origin of Doctor Strange and it's a quick one off I think Nightmare as a character can now that we've established all the weirdness and the origin of Doctor Strange you can kind of get more into these weirder dream dimensions or nightmare dimensions so I think it's great they held off Jeremy I was impressed at how much uh, Benedict Cumberbatch hid his British accent in this movie. <laughs> yeah. it's just, what, what can I say? But no, I agree with you. I totally uh, mind what you're saying here, where it's it's like you already have this, this world, this movie, where it's like, hey, just so you know, this is a bit nuts. We have a multiverse going on in another dimension. It's like, don't ask too much of them. You keep it on the keep it on the level and let people enjoy the magic. And they did it right. Christian. Yeah, there's too much to establish in the first movie. Then we have to add another level, level with Nightmare here. I think Schnepp's right. I think you put him in. Now, now that they've established the universe, they can put him in number two and we'll be fine. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, listen. I want to remind you, we do this show live. So we're going to save a few minutes at the end of the show, take some of your live Twitter questions. All you have to do is make sure you're following us on Twitter at Collider Video start firing in your questions and Wendy will pick a few out for us to answer at the end of the show I also want to remind you that Movie Talk is not the only show on Collider Video today a little bit later Jedi Council drops these two idiots are going to be on it so make sure you check that show that show <laughs> drops at 5pm Pacific Standard Time that's 8pm Eastern Standard Time also make sure you keep your eyes open for a little bit later because Later tomorrow, tomorrow, actually. It's not today, it's tomorrow. tomorrow. But the brand new movie trivia showdown goes down between Mark and Draco and William Bibliani. You are going to want to make sure you check out that match. It looks really solid. And also, Arrival also opens this weekend. And we've got our non-spoiler review for Arrival already up on the channel. You can go and check it out. You know what? We're going to bypass our mailbag segment today because we want to get right to your Twitter questions. So, Wendy didn't know that, so she's going to say it. So, Wendy, you <laughs> got some, Wendy. some Twitter questions lined up? Good. Yes, this one, actually a lot of people were asking this about Michael, so I'm just going to pick one out. James Thomas Walsh writes, Michael, who is your favorite actor you've ever worked with? Oh, favorite actor I've ever worked with. Oh, well, I, have to, I have to start with De Niro because, I mean, right. to work with him and like him, um, Stallone, uh, Christopher Walken. Um, those are Those are Samuel Jackson, Lawrence Fishburne. Like as far as people that I'm really big fans of, Harvey Keitel, um, <laughs> Woody like Allen, a, everybody. The guys yeah, work right. with everybody. Who's running there's down there's here? There's a bunch. There's a bunch more. There's a bunch more I would love to work with. Tons. Chappelle, you work with. I would love. To, yeah, that would be. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, there's a ton more that I would love. Tom to work Holland, with. never worked with. Him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next, Wendy? Phil Fanfum writes, uh, Michael Rappaport, what upcoming movie are you most excited for? To see? Yes. Man, I don't know. Do you see Manchester by the Sea yet? 
No. It was with Casey Affleck. Oh, I heard it was good. It's great. With uh, um, he, 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 Matt Damon produced it or something? I don't know if Damon, he might have, but uh, it's, it was a Sundance movie, but it's, it's, it's phenomenal. I think he's getting nominated for it. Oh, okay. It. Yeah. I didn't see it yet. Really I didn't good. see it yet. There's, I, I, I'm, I, I don't know what I'm, I'm that excited to see. The yet. Affleck film, what is it, Live by Night? Is Live by Night, yeah. yeah. Well, he's directed like it? A, yeah. yeah, it's a oh, gang film. Cool. It's yeah. a gang film. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Have you worked with Affleck? Never worked with oh, him. Okay. Never worked with him. But the, I, I like him as a director a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a yeah. really, he's really, really good really Gone good Baby director. Gone is fantastic. The town. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's fantastic. good. He's really good. So when is that film coming out? This year? Uh, comes out in like yeah, December. Year, like, comes yeah, out in December, yeah. yeah. Boston end of, end of Gangster film? Yeah. Uh, is it yeah. in Boston? Uh, Boston? Yeah, I believe it is. That's cool. Yeah. I'm yeah. excited about Old that. Old school. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. That's cool. All yeah. right, what's next? Food Man Singh writes, what movie uses sound design the best for narrative storytelling? For me, it's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, the sound yeah. of the good and bad. Well, everything about the good and bad, and the ugly. Is I'm gonna once awesome. up and go once upon a time in the West. I like that sound design. If you're going with you know westerns, Inception. So just the the constant harmonica, mm -hmm. just that callback of the Charles Bronson's harmonica. So. You're saying Inception? I said Inception. I think it was pretty good sound design. You knew kind of where you were in the world from the, the sound alone in that film. One mm -hmm. of the movies I really love the sound design in, it's really funny because I think it's a totally crappy movie, uh, Star Wars The Phantom Menace. This, yeah. Like when you said what Ben Burt did in that movie, the sound design in that movie is outstanding. It's just unfortunate that it was in Blade that movie. I'll say Blade Runner as well. It's a, you know, once you, It's totally immersive. You're like in this uh, futuristic world with all the different Vangelis soundtracks and the just the audio from the city streets and whatnot. Anything else, guys? I'll go with Raging Bull. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. shit. i go with Raging Bull with, with, with obviously the punches and the fights and the street and then also you felt you were in there you, yeah. you, and then also like there was animal sounds that were like under mm -hmm. like when he totally. like in the drama scenes like there was like sounds of like that that to me you know that movie uh, when, when I was sort of you know first sort of exploring it um, and, and hearing uh, the way it was put together and then looking and listening to just the sound you know there's sounds you know they use uh, you know, just this undercurrent of like these animal sounds, like mm -hmm. when he's going through all his abusive stuff that I think is re really good and very dramatic. And it's just sort of like accenting w what's going on in, in, in the scenes. All right. What's next? Christopher Woodburn writes, question for Michael. What was it like working with the Friends cast and you are awesome? Um, it was fun. You know, <laughs> Friends was fun. I, I think I did it like the sixth or seventh season. So the show was, you know, sort of, you know, uh, cultural success and iconic and you know, everybody, it, it was the time when television, you know, where like a television show was dominant, like a network television show was dominant. And that was one of the last shows that sort of had that dominance. They were all nice, fun, good people. Um, and I had a good time doing it. All right, what's next? All right, Pat Guy writes, loved Rappaport in True Romance and Justified. What director would he love to have a chance to work with? Oh, that's a good question. Besides Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> I would love, Ben Affleck is dope. Um, well, you got to go Quentin Tarantino, Martin Scorsese, of course, the Coen brothers. Those, those are the three like that I... Mm. Scorsese's like my... my, my I, I want to work with him so badly. Um, and then Tarantino, and then and then uh, um, the Coen brothers, I love them. So those three. I'm sure you talked to, about this before, too, but when, when obviously with Tarantino writing True Romance, did you interact with him a lot during, during that time? He wasn't around um, on the set when making of True Romance. Like, I had ran into him a few times when we were doing it, and I hadn't known him... Uh, already, but he he Tony Scott was was in charge right. and he was doing his thing. But I mean, we were all uh, very. I mean, the script was so good that it didn't. He didn't. You know, like it was just like just go and do your thing because the script was so laid out. Sure. Like it was just so very clear. And and as far as true romance, that's probably the only film that I've ever done where I knew it was going to be really good. Really. Like I knew that film was going to be good, even at the young age that I did it. Like you just knew with the cast and the script and the director. Like I was like, this is going to be a good movie. Yeah. Like, for sure, because you never really know. What's next? Seth writes, what did you guys think of the Valerian trailer? We, yeah, we, yeah, we, we talked, talked about, about that, that earlier. I mean, I, I don't really... A lot of people were asking again, and so I wanted to throw uh, it Now that I've had 30 minutes, I hate it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I really loved it 30 yeah. minutes ago, but a full decision turnaround. Go back and watch the replay. <laughs> All right, what's next? Dario JL writes, love the show, guys. Michael, what was it like to work with Murphy in Metro and Arno in Sixth Day? Eddie Murphy in Metro, like... He is like that movie to me is not a good movie, and neither is the sixth day. Come on, but I'll say, as far as <laughs> working with Eddie Murphy was a pleasure, he's probably not probably, he's the most talented person that I've ever worked with, just as far as talent. Like, you know, um, talking to him, the, the way he does scenes, 
you know, the way he just tells stories, you know, speaking of Raging Bull, like we would go back, like he loved Raging Bull, like we would do scenes together, mm. like just the way he tells a story, like a conversation, like he'll go into these voices and like just the talent, like pure talent is just oozes out of him. Wow. Like Jamie Foxx, uh, I've never worked with him too, but I've been around him a little bit. Like when he's telling a story, like just to hear him talk about something, like you're like, this guy's fucking talented. Like he'll just, just the way, he, like the, like he'll paint a picture of a, a random night out at a basketball game. You're just like, you know, there's just there's a talent. Like you know, he'll do a voice, a girl's voice, but he's not performing. It's just the way you just feel the talent. So Eddie Murphy has that, and and um, Schwarzenegger was really cool with me when I worked with him. He's very nice. He's very uh, you know approachable. You know, he's Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's a lot of ego, but totally cool. And, um, you know, it was a, a fun experience, just not a good movie. All right, what's next? College Movie Man writes, if you've missed every movie this year, what is the one you'd say is a must-see? Not your favorite, but a must-see. Hacksaw Ridge. Oh, Arrival. Hack, I mean, like, uh, like yeah. to me, Hacksaw Ridge is just, like, you have to see That's something. That's the Army, the, the, yeah. the war film? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that uh, Gibson, Gibson just directed. Right. It's, right it's out? It's yeah, it's out. in theaters. It's I just went out, out this past weekend. Is it really good? It's yeah. It uh, it yeah. shook me. It's yeah. unbelievable. It, it takes so place good. now? World War, no, World War II. Oh, World War II. True story about the medic that went into battle, never picked up a gun, and saved, like, hundreds of lives. Oh, yeah. I need to see that. Oh, it's, yeah. it's crazy is it, good. is it long? Like, is it epic? Like, is it like, two hours? Not two hours, yeah, but it's, it's really good, long. Though. Oh, my yeah. God, really yeah. Good. Andrew Garfield's incredible yeah. Yeah, in it. Yeah, he's a good actor. Vince yep. Vaughn's great yeah. in oh, it. Right. Hugo Weaving's amazing in oh, it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, here yeah. in yeah. California, it's legal to smoke pot now. <coughs> Doctor Strange is what I think. <laughs> uh, and I think the other one would be Hell or High Water. That's one that just came out of Blu-ray also, so I would check that out. Yeah, I'm miming John again, but the reason I like Hacksaw Ridge is because, I mean, 2016 has been a really divisive, venomous time, and you walk out of Hacksaw Ridge and you're like hopeful and inspired it was just it's a necessary movie in this mm. year it's really good and it's really good yeah, yeah. at the same time oh, like, you'll, see yeah you'll be shook all right Ooh. what's next Leo writes Michael what is your proudest work on film Ooh. oh that's a great question it's hard to pick it's hard to pick something that you, you're most proud of I mean I did a little movie I wonder if you guys saw I did a little movie called special yes, yes. and that, that to <laughs> me is a really good small you know anti superhero movie I mean it's a Two hundred thousand dollar budget. Wow. I love that film. You know, obviously the, the obvious things like True Romance, and you know, I mean, it, it, it's hard to say one thing. You know, working with Woody Allen is, is something like you know, as far as like being in in movies with him. Um, so it's, it's hard to pick. Uh, you know, but but like you know, for some reason, you know, when I think about something I'm really proud of, it's probably because I felt like I never got it to just do, and I felt like there's a lot of duplicators. Special to me is a really good small film that never really got the exposure that it was supposed to. Um, and, 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 and I think that there was biters, you know, uh, what, what was that movie? Kick, kick ass. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, like <clears throat> specials, the first movie where, you know, it's like a guy who's like a regular guy becomes a superhero. Super. Is another yeah. One. Super, Super is another one. one. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and so, so that's one that I, I go to as opposed to the ones that are like more, you know, True romance is obviously like easy to easy to go to. So like for me, like I put my blood and guts. And when we were making the movie at the time, like I was just in a in a in a specific space. So it was just a fun time to be acting in something like that. You know what? My favorite thing watching you in, and I'm not saying it was the best thing you were yeah. in, but my favorite thing watching you in is something a lot of people don't talk about. And it was a television series. It was Boston Public. Oh yeah. I yeah. loved watching you in Boston Thank Public. You. I thought you were really Thank great you. in that. Yeah, it was it's, fun. It was fun. Well, the one sorry, one I was going to throw at you also. I was hoping you're going to talk about. You mentioned it briefly. Was Copland. That was great oh, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was like. I mean, so it's hard to like say one thing and. You know, like your personal experience. I've done some bad movies. I did a fucking terrible movie with Christopher Walken. Terrible. But, I mean, I was with him every day for like, you know, a month working with him. You know, and, and, and uh, but like uh, that's an experience for me. Right. Like, you know, like the, I have the experience and the memories and the fun of it and, and, and all that stuff. So it's hard to pick. You know, the results are the results. Like, you know, when you're, when you're making a movie, you know, it's the, the, the daily process and the daily, you know, how, how much fun you're having. And then hopefully at the end of the day, it turns out to be as good as, as, as uh, the experience might be. So, um, because it's not an immediate thing. It's right. not like this right here, where this right. is an immediate gratification that right. I'm having right now. 
You know what I'm saying? Right. Like if we had to film this and then we edit it and then in a year and a half, they put all the special effects in and then I'd be like, <laughs> and then you see that it turned into a big piece of shit. I'd be like, but I had a great time doing it. I just it. want to be a severed head on a, on a, on a UFO. <laughs> all right, oh, yeah, the meme's coming now. I want to add, yeah. like my experience with you was like almost over 10 years ago, it was called A Day in the Life and yep. I was editing this rap musical yep. and you played uh, uh, Detective Grant. That's and you funny actually you talk rapped. Yep. And yep. You used to Sticky hang out, fingers from yeah, Onyx. You used to hang out with Michael K. Williams <laughs> yeah, yeah, behind yeah. it. This is like Rolling Trees constantly. What, was son. Michael in that film? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't work with him in that. No, you didn't work with him, but he was in the editing room, and you used to come to the editing room and kind yeah, of hang yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, so. that's, I didn't even put two and two together. He's got I just good. remember because it was very, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. specific to me. People so. like that movie. It was, yeah. it was an interesting. I think it's an interesting uh, uh, um, way to tell a story. I, I think that there's good things and bad things about that movie, but I think it could be done. You know, it's a hard thing to do, you know. Yeah, it was but, before Trapped in the Closet came out. Yeah, yeah, Kelly, right, right, right. Rocked it before that. So yeah, that so I Sticky Fingers, he's, he's talented. All right, let's take two more. Okay, Gabriel Kuhn writes, can a voice actor win an Oscar? Uh, right now, I don't think there's any category that really kind of allows for that. The, the idea of a voice actor winning an Oscar. I mean, I remember this came up with uh, uh, Black Widow. Why am I constantly forgetting? Scarlett Johansson. Right. Scarlett Johansson in her. Right, remember, it came close, that, came close. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that came up. It's difficult when, because the physical part of the performance is such a part of the performance right. that it's difficult to see the Academy doing it. At some point, depending on how, like we're seeing more and more animated films made every year. Maybe at some point that becomes a category of some sorts, but I, I don't I don't really see it happening. Do you guys have any thoughts? Yeah, it, it, I, I, I imagine we're not going to see that before we see Andy Serkis get something for motion capture. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if, if, as long as that hasn't happened, then that next step won't happen. There's a lot of other uh, categories that need to be filled out right. in the Oscars before we get to VFX. Comedies. So. They need comedies, to make a comedy casting, category. Uh, I don't Directors. like sub. I don't like. I, I, I don't. But I they never. Comedies will never have its own thing. Comedies will never get nominated ever. The Academy does not vote for them. Like, but are there any ones that you think like should realistically got nominated? There have been recently? Good, not recently. Recently, it's been tough. I mean, there are subcategories. There's there are certain like the straight up slapstick comedies that are never get nominated. But there are other movies with light humor in them that have dramatic moments also that could be in their realm. The Martian certainly shouldn't been had right. not been uh, nominated for a comedy for Golden Globes. Yeah. But there are. Right, I, that was stupid. That was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. All right, last question of the day. All right, this one comes from Jessica Hadouk, who writes, how was it, uh, this is for Michael, how was it to work with such an amazing cast on Kiss of Death, and do you have a story to share? Kiss of Death, David uh, Caruso, Nick Cage, yep. Samuel Jackson, yeah. Ving Rhames. Wow. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving out a, a, a handful of people. That movie is awesome. It's a good film. It's I a good it. film. You know, uh, the, the story I could say... Uh, uh, tell about that was <clears throat> there's a this is what Nick Cage you know like he was like you know he was like the dude and and I remember talking to him on the set and I said to him you know we're bullshitting around he's a kind of a quiet quirky dude and and we were like you know like what, what are you doing next uh, he's like oh I'm doing this little film about this alcoholic uh -huh. who, who goes to Las Vegas you know oh, it's this wow. dark little film <laughs> yeah. I remember him and wins an Oscar <laughs> leaving Las yeah. Vegas so yeah. uh, uh, I remember that it was fun. It was exciting. It was fun to, to be shooting that kind of New York movie um, uh, uh, with Barbe Schroeder. And it was a good cast. Like, I remember hanging with Ving Rhames, and he was cool, and Sam. And, and even, um, you know who else is in that film? Man, shit. The guy, he, he, he was in a lot of Paul Thomas Anderson films. The older dude, uh, he was in, fuck. Which one? Older guy. What was he in? Yeah, <laughs> fuck, man. But I can't remember his name. He's a good-ass actor. Yeah, I have hit. Shit, man. He was in that first one with with, with Philip Hoffman, uh, 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 and him. Did Boogie Nights? No. Oh, oh, Chris. Um, no. No. What's it? What's it? With the, he's a gambler. Philip Hoffman was a gambler. Oh, Hard Eight. Oh, Hard Eight. Hard, is it Hard Eight? I you guys are supposed to be yeah, film I geeks. Know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second. We're too in this. I, I, I should know. say Philip Hoffman. You should be rattling off. You mean Philip Baker Hall? Philip Baker Hall. You know who he is. So anyway, so so that was just a fun, a, a fun. It was a fun set. It's fun. Hey, you know, Stanley you, Tucci was also in it. Now Stanley that we're like, Tucci right, was in it too. Wow. So it's, a, it's always fun. Helen when Hunt. Were, Helen Hunt. It, Kevin Corrigan. It's always fun when you're you know you're on a set with actors like because there's a bunch of actors and like you know this becomes a little camaraderie totally. and, and all that stuff. 
Well, all right, guys, that'll do it for this installment of Collider Movie Talk. Thanks so much for joining us. I want to thank the guys sitting at the table with me. First of all, I'll start over there on my right. We got Christian Harloff. Where can people find you online? Well, make sure you check out today. Collider Jedi Council is going up with this character, Ken Knapsack <laughs> and Tiffany Smith. We will be going on today at 5 p.m. John mentioned the movie trivia showdowns going down tomorrow. I'm going to pitch hard to get Michael Rappaport on that show. I'll tell you I that much. I won't do good. But you I'll, I'll I'd love to have you in trivia. I mean, you got it. You got. I'm not going any of this space shit. This is no. This is <laughs> we'll, we'll put it. We'll put it, we'll put Scorsese in there. Yeah, do we'll that. Put it, we'll I'm put it with that. All right, we'll, all right I, I'm going to hold you to it. Love, but if you talk about what was the movie you brought up earlier? Tom Valerian. Holland's career. Valerian. Tom Holland's career. Yeah, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> structure it towards your strengths for Elia. sure. Runner. Yeah. And where can find you, uh, Sorry, at Christian Harloff, Twitter and Instagram, and watching Copland this weekend. Okay, Jeremy, okay. where can people find you? <laughs> you can find me on uh, YouTube, uh, Twitter, and Instagram, at Jeremy Johns. You can find me here four days a week, Monday through Thursday. Uh, John Schnapp, where can people find you? You'll find me in a black hole crying watching Battle Beyond the Stars. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. So but where can people the, find you? I'm on the internet anywhere. Whatever. <laughs> and, of course, our special guest, Mr. Michael Rapport. Michael, thanks so much for being thanks here. Thanks for having me. Where can fun. people, number one, where can people follow you online? Number two, where I'm can easy people to get find. your documentary? Well, shit, Beat Tribes in Life. Uh, the tribe movie you could get I think it's on iTunes now Q-tip Q-tip um, and that's easy to find and you can find me anywhere I'm all, all over the internet talking you know <laughs> talking, <laughs> talking to I'm, I'm easy to find over I there. see the Rocky poster. I was going to do a line from Rocky. So if you need to find me, you call to one and say, Yo, Rappaport, you need me. Like, you know, when he said, Yo, yeah. whoa. <laughs> so. Natasha, where can people find you? You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at NatashaLexis underscore. And Wendy Lee. On Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat at Wendy Lee Zaney. And of course, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere, simply at John Campia. Make sure you subscribe to Comic Con HQ, where John Schnepp and I have our show, Film HQ, new episodes every Saturday. Special thanks to everybody in the room, and special thanks to you guys, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> If you like this yeah. video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.